Hey there, I'm Weiss, and this is a song breakdown. Uh, starting with First Hater, which uh, was originally part of Happy Ass Kid, and then was later re-recorded and remastered and everything for Prince Charming Chronicles. But the beat was actually made in 2017, that summer. I remember I actually made it specifically, almost like as a motivational thing, for a handful of buddies of mine that were on a, like a two and a half month road trip to celebrate our high school graduation. And so it had like totally different lyrics. Anyways, I just remember that summer going to Meadowbrook Beach with one of my buddies and we just jammed to that fucking beat all day and I, I totally fell in love with it, so it made the cut for Happy Ass Kid. Came off today, got my first hater. Don't worry, son, live it later and greater. Listen to me on your stripes and the labor. Don't worry, ma, cause I'm one happy sailor. With the song in general, I wanted to just take the idea of haters and sort of flip it on its head and make it like a congratulatory almost milestone in your career as an artist so it's essentially just me like excitedly reporting to my mom that um i got my first hater and her mistaking that for for sorrow and I'm like no mom no nah, bitch it's all good do me to worry ma because it didn't give a shit if anything it got me pumped because i'm legit they do try their best as they're losing contenders provide attendance to my page Basically just saying I'm more legitimate as an artist for having haters. Like, they try their best to bring me down, but really all it does is draw more attention to what I've got going on. Always talking and shit, don't know the plans that I have. About to do the shit like nobody else has. More than just music, taking note for the world. Part of like attitude, yo, we're the black pearl. You know, they don't know the tricks I, I have up my sleeve or the long-term plans that have... Uh, see fruition and continue to see fruition. Uh, also, if there's an opportunity to sneak in a Pirates of the Caribbean reference, I'm gonna fucking do it. So. No, no, no. No time for me. Earbuds in, not listening. Get my shit done, stay low key. Chin stay high. No, 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 no. No time for me. Not listening. Not listening. Lastly, just saying that I'm not giving, I'm not giving haters any of my time. I'm just going to keep staying, you know, staying low, getting my shit done, but my head's going to be held high. This is the instrumental for First Hater, which uh, if I zoom in here, you can see is built primarily around this sample. So then, uh, and that that sample was of a pipa, and Logic, which is this program, uh, has its own pipa. So I went in and made my own little uh, counter melody to that, and I looped that, and then I also chopped up this existing sample into these two parts. They're on different tracks because they're panned different ways. So this one is a little bit to the left, and this one to the right. That's awesome. Also, obviously, it's layered with these videos. Let's see it, baby. <laughs> yeah, Those are just oh uh, miscellaneous videos I found that um, were of me fucking smoking with my friends, and it just felt like a, uh, a perfect thing to add to the song at the time. You know, th this has a long instrumental introduction, obviously, and I felt like... Um, I felt like the videos were a great counter to the instrumental. It felt almost like the instrumental was a, like a score to the videos. And then I also added a piano. And then just these repeating cellos. You'll notice even though these are the same notes, they're not on a loop, and that's because I wanted to humanize them. So they're all at different velocities and no nothing's totally straight on. And then there's these uh, bass plucks. You can't even hear those, they're so low. That is what I built, you'll see a little bit later, that is what I built the um, deep sub bass around when, when the song sort of kicks into gear. So everything builds up. And everything just stacks very nicely. As we move on over to the... Uh, I guess where the song culminates. There's another pipa, same instrument, but I added a uh, 
a different effect. It's an overdrive effect, so I'll show you. See, super, super quiet. But it gives it this overdrive, like gives it a, a lot of drive and, and warmth there, and I really wanted that. These are just reverbs, I believe. Yep, reverb A, reverb B. I always, excuse me, I always do two reverbs. So uh, we, we have this chopped up sample melodically, and then we also have this. And then um, the rest of it is carried by, uh, mostly by the sub bass. Then we add this dream voice, which is super, super subtle. I just wanted it to sort of uh, fill some more melodic space and make everything feel a little more dreamy. And I'll even just solo that. And like I said, super, super subtle. Then we also have the sub bass right here. Again, pretty, pretty hard to detect in a video like this uh, because it's, it's sub bass is more felt than it is heard, but this, um, this bass line is pretty melodic. And you'll notice e even with a, a synthy sound like that, I still tried to humanize it, give it a little bit more life. This is the drum folder, it's pretty big. So I've got it in a folder so I can put um, the same effects on it. Each of these has its own effects. Some are off, some are on. But altogether, I still wanted all of the drums to feel not like they were coming from a bunch of different kits and out of nowhere, but that they were from the same unanimous kit. And uh, I just wanted them to feel glued together, which is mainly what the compressor does, but all, all these other filters just sort of, uh, like I said, glue it together and make it feel like one solid piece of the song. And then these are, uh, these are the vocals, so I'll just run through this super quickly. Um, the chorus I have broken into two different parts because there's a little bit of overlap. Hey Ma, today, got my first hater. Don't worry son, live it later and greater. Listen to me, earn your stripes in the labor. Don't worry Ma, cause I'm a happy sailor. And then I really like the effects that I put on, on the chorus. So to uh, give certain lines more punch and like I said, more dreaminess, just fit it in with the, the song a little better. I put some vocal doubles on the same track. They do try and you'll notice those are really quiet. Content. Yeah, I even uh, automated it so after the point of the chorus, all those vocals are are way lower, so they sit under the main vocals. They do try their best as they're losing contendents. Provide the tendons like I said, to just my punches it up. I'll also add these doubles. So these, these two right here, panned hard left and hard right, are the exact same as this top one. But um, when you pan them hard right and hard left and do a little bit of pitch shifting here, uh, it gives your vocals more, more stereo width more space, makes it feel less like you're right in someone's face and, and like, you know, you're, you're in it, uh, in the actual room. Don't need to worry, Ma, cause it didn't give a shit. If anything, it got me pumped cause I'm more legit. They do and try their best. this right here is an emphasis. This, like I said, it just punches up the existing vocals. That's what a lot of, uh, a lot of mixing, at least in, in my case is. So you just, you just barely hear that. And it's, uh, it's got this gnarly high pass or low pass. It's got this gnarly filter on it so that um, not a lot of the high end on the vocals comes through. See, it's really just all that low end noise and it, it's more felt than heard. Same, same with the, like I said, the sub drums. And these are all panned dramatically different so that they're sort of jumping all over the stereo width. This negative 30, positive 24, that just means it, that's like a measurement of like, okay, this one's this far to the left and this one's this far to the right. Then I also have the, the reverb is different on each of them. I usually like to, to give my ad libs a lot of reverb because it makes the song at large feel more spacious. Uh, but that sort of depends on what I'm going for at the time. I'll just show you my, uh, how I've got everything set up. Oh, that's funny. I made a delay B and I never, I never used it. Yeah, so th this is um, everything I've got on the vocals. Uh, th this is the main vocals, EQ, DSer, three compressors, another EQ as a, th that I use as like a, a high-end softener, then a console EQ, which simulates, um, simulates more old-school, like analog EQ sounds. 
These are the backup vocals right here, same sort of deal. Um, you know, it's a lot simpler because it sits in the background. I got some saturation to thicken the vocals up. Hook vocals have their own totally different channel strip. Chorus effect, some reverbs. It's really nothing crazy. I just love the instrumental so much that I needed to uh, dedicate one part of the song at least to, um, to the sort of like hip hop side of it with no vocals so I could let the instrumental breathe. The last observation I would make is that everything is color coordinated, as you can see. Usually my color coordinating across projects is, uh, is the exact same, just because it makes everything easy. I see that bluish purple and I'm like, oh, there, there are the vocals. So I do my best to keep things organized and that organization goes a long way.